What's up guys? Welcome back from another quad vlog. Oh my god, of course I need gas. I hope you guys haven't forgotten about me. I know it's been a couple months since I've uploaded a video on the channel and I have to apologize for that. It's just been, uh, it's kind of gotten to be a busy summer for me. But uh, I do have an update for you guys on the Triumph Daytona. I did sell the bike. It's off to an owner that'll probably ride it a lot more than me. So overall, I'm happy with the situation and how things ended up. Quickly before I start the topic of today's video, I want to talk about the exhaust that we're going to get for the Raptor. I think I finally decided that I'm going to get the big gun dual exhaust. I think that's the best exhaust for the money, performance wise. I think that's just probably the best bet. It'll be like 600 bucks with tax and I'll probably buy that within four to six weeks or something like that. So you guys can look forward to seeing that on the channel sometime soon. All right, so let's get right into today's video. So while I was gone uh, for the past month, I got a slew of comments on one of my most popular videos on the channel, and that is how to drive a quad or four-wheeler with a clutch. So today's video is gonna be a part two to that video. So basically, if you guys already know how to drive a quad with a clutch, or you don't wanna watch the video, feel free to click off the video now. But today we're gonna do a part two to that video and address some of your guys' comments, questions, and uh, yeah. So let's get right into it. First off, if you guys haven't seen the uh, first video I made, I'll link it in the comments below, top of the description. Uh, that basically goes over a little miniature horse. That is like the funniest thing I've ever seen. And his wiener's hanging out below. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, that video basically goes over how to drive anything with a clutch. A lot of people like the video, and I, I try to do my best job to go over all the basics for anybody that has no idea what they're doing. All right. Oh my god, that road's terrible. So now that you guys have watched the video, or at least you know what video I'm talking about, maybe some of you ventured down into the comments. At any rate, the first thing we have to address about that video is one of the most popular number one comments that I always get on it, and that is that I misspoke about starting the quad in neutral. So I want to take a minute just to talk about that. I wonder what is back here. Why is this road cl actually closed? I don't really know why it's like, oh, oh, that's kind of sketchy, dude. <laughs> All right, I was just curious why it was closed. That's a cop. He looks like he's gonna stop me too. How's it going? What's that? No. No, I just went and checked it out. I didn't go about down it though. How far did you go? Well, you know that the road's washed out. Right. Yeah, I didn't go past it. Right, but the problem that we have is the sign right there that says road closed. Yeah. You can get jammed up, right? Okay, yeah. So I can give you a ticket for going past the road closed sign, which I'm not going to do. Okay. I don't think you had any. No. Just anytime there's a sign of you can't go around it. Okay. And you're probably just checking out. Yeah, I was checking out why it was closed, that's all. So, anyway, you're good. I'm not going to change it. All right, man. Stay away. All right, no, I will. All right, thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Oh man, that actually, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous there that he was gonna write me a ticket for going past the road close sign. Thankfully he was a cool cop and didn't check my license or registration or even the quad. All right, so let's go ahead and pull over here. I don't think anybody will bother me over here. So let's finish talking about the top comment. So the top comment on the video, on the first video is that I mentioned that you had to be in neutral to start your quad and everyone's saying that's not true and it's not true you don't have to be in neutral you can start your quad while it's in gear watch I'll show you guys it's in gear right now note that my clutch is pulled in and the engine starts just fine but in the video I said that you had to be in neutral 
Um, and I did that on purpose. I did that on purpose because as a beginner, I think that you should, I don't think you should ever start your engine um, when it's not in neutral because you're just kind of asking for the possibility of an accident to happen. So if you start your engine when the clutch is out and it's not in neutral, then, uh, and you don't have a clutch sensor, you can damage your engine because when you start your engine, it's going to move the quad forward. But even if you do have your clutch pulled in, let's say if your clutch pulled in, you start it, and maybe you get confused with, you know, the brake and the clutch because you're a new rider and you let your clutch out, you know, your, your, your bike's, whatever you're riding is going to move forward. So it's not really the safest thing to start your engine when it's not in neutral. So as a beginner, you should always start your quad or dirt bike, whatever you're riding when it's in neutral. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about some more of the things that I saw in the comments and let's start answering some questions that I saw. If you guys watch the video and you're new, you guys know the basic controls of the quad. You got your clutch, throttle, front brake, back brake, shifter. You guys know the controls. You should know how to get the quad started properly. Uh, you should know your gears, neutrals in between first and second. The next question, that I want to answer is a lot of people don't know when to shift and I want to tell you guys a funny story very quickly um, I had a friend I used to have a Raptor 350 I'm not gonna mention his name or anything like that but I had a Raptor 350 and he did not know how to drive clutch I let him drive my Raptor 350 and that's a six-speed manual transmission just like this one this one's just a five-speed he did not know when to shift either because when I let him on the quad uh, he told me he knew how to drive it, so I was like, all right, whatever, you know, uh, go take it for a spin. So <clears throat> I, I, he put it in first gear, he got moving okay, he did, I think he might have sold it like maybe once or twice or something like that, but he got moving eventually and uh, he wanted to go faster. So naturally, anybody that doesn't know when they should be shifting, just, you know, if I want to go faster, I'm just going to press the gas more, turn the throttle more. And uh, he like went around half my like neighborhood block just with the throttle pinned and I could hear the engine like bang and rev limiter for like a solid like 20-30 seconds. <laughs> and I'm just like, dude what are you doing? Like, don't you know you have to shift? And uh, no, he, he didn't know. So if you guys, I guess that's a common thing, like if you don't know when to shift, you just don't shift. So let's go ahead and teach you guys when you should know you have to shift into the next gear. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull into this parking lot and we're just gonna demonstrate how to shift from first to second because that's the easiest, there's less wind noise and everything like that. So <clears throat> based upon the first video, you guys should know how to do this. You guys should know how to give it some gas, let your clutch out slowly and get moving in first gear. And so how do you know when to shift into second gear? You know, that's as fast as I can go in first gear. It's like 10 miles an hour. So how do I know when I need to shift into first gear? Well. The truth is, is you just kind of have to feel it. You just have to listen to the engine and feel how, you have to feel what the engine's telling you. So right now, like I'm going five miles an hour and you know, the engine isn't that loud. I can tell it's, it's not revving that high, but as soon as I press the throttle more, that's, that's, you can tell that it's ringing the engine out. The RPMs are getting way too high, way too loud. I need to shift gears because I'm not getting any more speed. I'm, I'm getting a lot more noise, but I'm not getting out many, much more speed. So that's what's telling you, you need to shift gears into second gear. So let's go ahead and start from the stop. Go from first gear, let that clutch out. Pull in your clutch, you need to shift. Same thing with second gear. I'll probably have to go on the road for this one because third gear is kind of, a little bit faster so um, let's try shifting from second gear to third gear so I'll open my shield so you guys can hear better so the answer to the question is you should basically shift into the next gear when you feel like you're not gaining any more speed when you give it more throttle and at the same time while the engines getting let's say excessively loud oh man it's starting to rain are you kidding me Woo
So the next question I want to answer for you guys is what do you do when you have to come to a stop? Or what do you have to do when uh, you go from let's say 50 miles an hour to 20 miles an hour? Obviously, if the question goes deeper than you have to apply your brakes. A lot of people are wondering, how do you know what gear you have to be in at, let's say, a certain speed? And so what I'm going to teach you guys is a trick I use called engine braking. And most people use it, most people do it, maybe they do it and they don't even know it. So let's say I have to go from 40 miles an hour down to 20 miles an hour. Let's say this light turns red and I have to, you know, slow down. What I do is I let off my throttle. Oh, perfect. It turned red. What I do is I let off my throttle. I'm in fourth gear. I let fourth gear slow me down. Then I shift into third gear. Let third gear slow me down. Second gear. Second gear slow me down. And then I come to a stop. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that. As soon as this light turns green, I'll demonstrate how to engine brake properly. That was pretty slow engine braking. I shifted like later to kind of show you guys how to do it, but let me show you guys how to do it fast and properly. This is a perfect place to show you guys what I mean. We're gonna go like 35 to let's say 20 miles an hour. So right now we're in second gear. Let me clear off the camera. Shift it to third gear, let's get up to speed. Okay, we're going 35 miles an hour and I have to come down. <laughs> Woo! So I let off the throttle, let the fourth gear, third gear, second gear, just like that. And now I'm in second gear and I'm going, you know, a speed that I can just roll back on the throttle and continue moving. Let's go ahead and do it again just for fun. So I'm going. Just like that. So those are some of the main comments that I saw on the first video I posted. Of course, if you guys have further comments or questions, leave them below on this video and I'll be happy to answer them or possibly make a part three, hopefully not. But um, if you guys have any further comments or questions, leave them below. I just have one last thing to talk about and it's pretty much related to what I was just talking about. Someone asked if it's a good idea to shift say from fifth gear all the way to second gear with the clutch pulled in. So the answer to the question is yes, technically you can shift from fifth all the way down to second with your clutch pulled in, but uh, I would probably again recommend against it because you can also damage your engine internals. I'm not exactly sure uh, what it's called. I think it might be called your input shaft. Things can get damaged inside your engine and you'll notice that if you try shifting from let's say fourth gear, third gear down to first gear really quickly with your clutch pulled in, that can damage or I think chip your, uh, there, there's some teeth in there of course, I don't really know a lot about transmissions, they're complicated, but that can damage your transmission if you do that a lot. So if you do choose to do it that way, be sure to shift down gradually, pull in your clutch, shift into fourth gear, wait your wait for your vehicle or your quad whatever to slow down a little bit then shift to third then shift to second don't just shift from fifth down to second in like two seconds before you slow down you need to slow down your uh your drivetrain in order to shift down that quickly all right so that's all i have for today's video if you have any comments or questions leave them below and i will see you guys next saturday